with plastic pollution, are we creating a new kind of nature? We, we essentially are. We essentially are, yeah. Every year, an astounding 230,000 tons of noodles end up in the ocean. Are we on a path towards transforming our nature? What can we do to create knowledge and awareness of plastic pollution? At the Norwegian Geotechnical Institute, there is a unique collaboration between the American photographer Elizabeth Ellenwood and NGI researcher Hans-Peter Arp. Uh, we are here looking for these. Um, and these, these are all uh, plastic pellets or nicknamed nurdles, um, which are really fascinating little pieces of plastic um, that I've been collecting since I think January is my first collection date. Um, I'm here on a Fulbright scholarship and an American Scandinavian Foundation grant to make um, artwork collaborating with scientists about plastic pollution and ocean pollution. How can a combination of art and science help increase awareness of plastic pollution? Art and science can be a powerful tool combined, combined together. My approach is to make artwork that's able to show um, what scientists are studying, but in a way that allows for this like approachability and moments for, um, for individuals to like kind of have this emotional reaction to. At the NGI lab, the noodles from Hook Beach in Oslo are analyzed. The main thing that we, we find out here is, is the identity of the noodles. So like you can probably see visually that it's a plastic. And we just did a, an experiment now where we um, put the, a, a noodle, it was a white noodle, on this FTIR machine. Um, it's sitting there on a kind of a crystal that will put FTI radiation. And this will reflect off the surface of the plastic and this gives a kind of a, a signature or a fingerprint. And the fingerprint is, is right here. Um, and that will show us, this, is, this confirms that the identity of the plastic is a, a polyethylene. So the question is, with the enormous amounts of plastic ending up in the ocean, are we creating a new kind of nature? We, we essentially are, we essentially are, yeah. I, th I think both Liz and I were interested in how plastic affects nature and life, but also how life and nature affects plastic, because th there's an interface there, and they're coming together, and this is something that we've been exploring in our project, that these two things are kind of merging, and that's what Elizabeth is capturing in her images, and it's, that's the big research question. What does this mean where life and plastics merge? Is it mean, is it benign, or is it going to change the molecular composition of life? It's a, it's a very thought-provoking question that we're approaching with science and art. Elizabeth's pictures of plastic are really beautiful. But what does she think of the possible controversy of making art out of a problem, such as plastic noodles contaminating our beaches and in the long term, changing the nature. Yeah, I think it's um, actually a really good way of getting people interested and involved because you're gonna look at something if it's beautiful and more pleasing to the eye. So it's definitely a little bit of a, a trick that I like to use in my work of inviting people in, getting them interested by the beauty and then having this thought process of what am I actually looking at? Oh, it's pollution, it's actually not beautiful. So it's, it's kind of this in, in, inviting with beauty and then getting you to think more about the problem, the underlying problem. 